But for now, uh, we Oops. we were having a discussion earlier that we might as well bring up in the podcast. Uh, oh, hey, oh, Tyler's yeah. back. But um, <laughs> we were having a discussion where me and Bradley have different definitions of what constitutes as a superhero story. And some examples came up that kind of challenged my worldviews here. And then some examples came up where I was like, no, that's definitely not a superhero story. Yeah. And then, I, my and, problem is my problem is I don't have a definition for it. And, uh, and I, I, I do. That's part of why I was asking you guys. And I thought we, it'd be worth to bring up as a quickie just because a lot of the people who listen to our podcast also listen to Worm. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a good cross-section there. And so I, I kind of I liked the uh, elements Willer brought up. Even if I don't necessarily agree with all of them, I think he had pretty valiant points for all of them. Where, um, you said there are kind of like four, and like they're not necessarily hard rules, but they're like four kind of uh, key elements that you would find in any classical superhero character or story. Yeah, to me, the superhero genre has these variables, and this kind of brought up like it was sprung up because. Uh, we saw like the what are they called the new warriors Marvel's new superheroes, and I oh, just yeah. I which are oof I don't I said I don't know if they're boomer shit or if they're zoomer shit or somewhere in a weird in between but they are some odd picks for Marvel's hot new lineup. Anyways, it, um, it, it, I came up where I was like, oh man, I don't really like superhero fiction. Superhero fiction bad with some yeah. two with two exceptions which i've talked about on this channel and i was and, just like what counts as a superhero because because uh, bradley was bringing up like do you think jojo counts and then this becomes a whole conversation that can be had because like some jojo parts like obviously like like parts one and two obviously no it's like a kind of fantasy adventure yeah uh but then i'm, I'm like uh i think one of the things i was talking about is like the passion gang from part five and then super powered mafias you might find in other media such the as worm real... and accord for example he has got yeah, the only real difference that i found initially was one group actually calls their some themselves super villains and the other one doesn't uh willard brought up and i i think this is the key difference is that uh the the gang members in part five of jojo's whenever they go home they're still the same person they don't have an identity yeah whereas like other super powered mafias would have an identity that, yeah that's... this goes into the four variables we were talking yeah, about yeah, where i was the four variables i was gonna say it's um the identity aspect that is a huge trope in superhero stories the setting if there is superhero teams like a justice league or a league of evil or mm-hmm. some sort of equivalent I think that's pretty common in those stories. Yeah. Um, what were the other two? There was the uh, type of powers where I feel like superhero stories um, usually draw from these generic powers that you see all the time, like durability have... and lasers and flying and teleportation, like powers that are about fighting. Yeah, not um, like Rohan's ability or anything. Yeah, and I um, think the fourth element was a uh like a defining goal something that yeah like it, it's kind of tied with the identity it's what they put that mantle on for to achieve yeah it's like do you go out and fight the villains every night or are you fighting the villains as part of a journey because I, I think that's where it's less superhero at that point anyways it, it basically like the more check boxes that a story hits within those four the more likely i'd be to call it a superhero story yeah. so and it's like I was because the big question I had here is like, what what line makes a character a superhero slash supervillain, and what line makes like a story a supervillain superhero story? And because like, I feel like a lot of different people could have similar but still different answers to this. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, like if we have those four elements, like how many do you need, or how prominent do they have to be? And like, do people would people even agree with those four elements? That's why it's worthy to bring this up like yeah and joe brought up the movie chronicle which i fucking love by the way i it's own a good it movie uh and when like you think about it because i've talked about that movie with people before and they're like oh that's that kind of like weird superhero movie but when you think about it if we look at those four elements it only maybe has one yeah 
because yeah. in the setting, these three kids are the only people with powers. Mm -hmm. Number two, they don't really have that defining identity. They are just themselves, just but kids. now they can move stuff. Yeah. Uh, they don't have a particular goal. They just kind of mess around and do the same shit they would normally do. And they stop a villain at the end, but like, is it... Are we calling him a super villain or just a bad guy with powers? Yeah, so it's strange how... I don't know. A lot of people register this as a superhero movie. The creator, uh, I believe Max Landis made that movie. Um, uh, the creator thinks, like, he calls it a superhero story, but this might be a thing where it's like, I don't necessarily agree with the creator there. I feel like it could be the beginnings of a superhero story. Like, this could go places where it's like, it then becomes like the... No, because the, the, the guy dies at the end, so there's no one else. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Spoiler! I, oh right, oh, Chronicles yeah. very. You don't know what guy dies. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of guys in the movie. Um, so, like, it's kind of interesting. We we kind of wanted to talk about this to get like maybe some opinions from yeah, viewers definitely. over how you would define this genre. Because to be clear, whenever I was saying like, whenever I was talking about like the the gang stars and JoJo's Part Five, I don't want to say. I'm not trying to say, oh, I view them as supervillains. I just want to know, like, how do, how like how do we know they're different? Like, where do we draw yeah. that line? I, so I want to see what people think. The thing about superheroes is like, it, it's such a weird thing where I almost, to me, you have to go in saying it's a superhero movie or a superhero story in order to kind of be that because, like, you look at Chronicle, and if you mm -hmm. walked into Chronicle and wasn't told it was a superhero story, it would have just been about three kids that get weird powers and, and kind of do things. But it, With the almost... exception, unless, like, everything power-based that you've ever experienced is Marvel, yeah. for example, then I right. could see you making that confusion, because, like, that's the only point you have to draw from. But I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, it's... it's, it's like... To me, it's it's a weird kind of stigma that you have to, like, put on yourself or anybody. Because, like, you, you think about JoJo's, <laughs> it, except the identity part, it's kind of the same concept of, like, they have a power, they fight against people, and they try to do something good. No, but here, here's where I draw that line. In JoJo, the goal is very unsuperhero. It yeah. is, we're going to find, we're, it's like a mystery. We're going to find a serial killer. We're going to escape from prison and get revenge on the priest. We're going to finish her race. And we're going to assassinate a man in Egypt. And then fights happen along the way. But it's not like they're not putting on a, a, a mantle every night to go fight crime. They're stopping no, crime I, as I, a I, result. Um, I think also what doesn't help is that the Marvel take on superheroes has changed. Because the idea of identity being separate from the actual like hero character has kind of been well, dissolved. Still DC. That's still big in DC. It's big in DC, but Marvel's definitely... What Marvel still has is this whole, like, us versus them, where it's like there's mm -hmm. the people with the powers, and society at large knows... Like, it has the setting part checked out. Right. Where there's the these, all these organizations, there's S.H.I.E.L.D., there's the Defenders, there's Thanos' peeps, and then there's the normal people who look up to them as gods, who are d dictating their lives. Not <laughs> not every story with superpowers has that. Like, let's take, let's take Bleach... I wouldn't yeah. consider Bleach a superhero story because it's this whole thing happening far beyond our realm of understanding as humans because they're all dead. I wouldn't say that uh, I guess he wouldn't have like a different identity, but he does go out and do things at night and, and takes care of things at night. But so I, at least motivation part. wise, it's a little superhero in the beginning, but then it yeah. just becomes I'm going to save Ori Orihime or whoever's kidnapped that arc. I think Rukia at some point. Yeah. Um, but oh, in, these, in these conversations, Dragon Ball came up, and I was like, wait, actually, Dragon yeah. Ball has a lot in common with superhero tropes. Well, you had to remember, Toriyama literally made Goku based off of Superman at one point. Like, his whole origin story, quote-unquote, is Superman's origin story. I did not know. Well, yeah, that's true. His origin story was Son Goku. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, well like, I mean that. Well, that, but also, you know, when we Dragon Ball Z, it's like, oh, I'm the last remaining person of my species, and my Kryptonian. father sent me off to save me, and the planet blew up, and then a whole bunch of other shit. But, like, what influence is drawn from Superman in that series at mm -hmm. the very end? And it shows. Um, I think it checks all those boxes we mentioned earlier. But I wouldn't consider Dragon Ball Z 
uh, a superhero like story. Would you? Wouldn't like, you though? Like, I think I think then it's like you're looking at it versus like East versus Western storytelling. I think it has <laughs> everything that a superhero genre would have. A big deal for me, except I identity. Uh... Except, except Goku doesn't wear a mask and doesn't have a separate identity. Goku is still Goku whether he's fighting or he's asleep. That's or, or where because Dragon Ball has such a shit setting. That's where things kind of take a nosedive. What were you yeah. saying, Brad? Oh, a big deal that hits me, I think, is and Joe sort of mentioned it is the label that's put on it because I think I'm I kind of only view Chronicle in the superhero light because that's what I heard it was and that's how people refer to it. Um, I don't know, because, uh, for me, like, I kind of mentioned this in our Discord chat, where, like, the the label, a lot of times, is what will make the difference for me viewing it as superhero versus not. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, I'm going to go back to the gang members of Passion. I don't view them as supervillains, but if at the beginning of Part 5, Bruno said, oh, we're a mafia of supervillains, I would have been like, okay, okay, sure, yeah, you're supervillains. Like, if he mm-hmm. called himself that, I would believe it. Yeah, I would... but I mean, not necessarily because I don't see Chronicles is said to be a superhero story by the creator. I'm like, it doesn't have much of that. It's like an origin story like of someone big, with power. Yeah. A big part of it definitely is you. I think you hit all the nails on the head for me. Where is like the idea of the concept of having a separate persona that is this person? It's the idea of separating like the god from the man. You know, who's Iron Man versus who's Tony Stark? Mm-hmm. Who's Spider Man versus Peter Parker? There's a whole, there's a great bit in Marvel and in Civil War where, you know, Tony Stark is like, well, you, you became the most athletic person probably in your high school now. You probably think smarter than everyone else. Why don't you go do football? And she's like, well, that's not Peter Parker. That's not what I would do, even if I didn't have these pro- powers. It's the idea of like a separate identity or something like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Where, where does Death Note fall? Big... Yeah. Like, because uh, Death Note, um... they have identities, but it, it has nothing else that I would consider superhero y at all. So there's that. So there's 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 layers to it. You can tick out you can tick one of the I boxes I, but not all four. I always think another thing is that like how big of an impact is this hero slash villain having on its like large scale community or, or world? Like how is it like because the whole point of super is that it's above man and what they can do. Mm. Like, how does that change? What's the ripple effect of that person being in this kind yeah. of... Yeah, because when I view supervillain, it's like, oh, they're affecting society around them for the worse, and superheroes yeah. are affecting society like, what... around them for the better. Lex Luthor doesn't have any superpowers, but I think he's still considered a supervillain because he's able to create such ripples in the society that he lives in. It's, the scale of what he does. it's more like he has science that is magic. Well, <laughs> that's yeah, a superpower but like you look at persona i'm persona you look at well maybe even persona but you look at like you know um jojo's and most of those arcs like the, the things that happen there don't affect the world or community at large with the exception of poochie in part six yeah and but like that doesn't change like how society ends up running itself like it yeah really it's all on the down low uh, Bradley yeah. had a really good example with a character called Rachel from Worm. It's like, what if Rachel was the only person with a superpower left? What would you yeah. consider that kind of story? In, like, in that setting, if she was the only person who had a power, mm-hmm. she only takes on a name because other people gave her a name first, and she only wears a mask because you're supposed to wear a mask. When people see her, they obviously already know who she is. Mm-hmm. But you removed oh, yeah. that setting, but you kept the power, so it's interesting. I think, yeah, so, like, I, they, I, if, if it was just her and that setting and no other powered people, I might view it a little bit more like Chronicle, where it's just like, oh, this is just a person who has an ability. It's it's very much more of an outcast kind of story at yeah. that point. Yeah, like an outcast like a, story. Like a wit or like a witch. I need to see the witch. I really want to see that movie, because, even though I know... I'll, it, it would be I'll, her fighting, like, dog rings and stuff. Like, she's not... She wouldn't be fighting anything super like it's, so that... it's yeah but i think the idea is I don't, I don't know like it's just a person with these powers and so how do they kind of like interact with this like would you consider joker like a super villain movie quote unquote oh yeah when you think about it in joker no. like you only view like someone might only view it that way because it's called joker it's called joker but when you think about it it really is just a guy kind of going crazy yeah 
Yeah, Joker, I mean, but very deliberately, Joker is a film where they slapped on comic book on top of it to kind of get it to a wider appeal kind of idea, you know? Yeah, you could do that movie without it being DC's Joker. I believe it's called Taxi Driver. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. It is called Taxi Driver. Um, But yeah, that's Hero Talk. Please, if you listen to this, in the comments below, what are your thoughts on genre definition genre definitions in general can be tricky but i feel like the superhero genre is so big in our culture we're like surely there are lines that can be drawn somewhere also so you can make superheroes like a sub genre of itself or yeah. vice versa uh but yeah that's